All right, folks, joining me now, the, the Bonson Group Managing Director, David Bonson. And, David, I pick up on that. Uh, do you feel like maybe investors are getting in a little over their skis right now? I think it depends on what they're going back into. If people believe that all of a sudden the stuff that was down last year got cheap, then I think they're over their skis. It's cheaper, but I don't think it's cheap. And I think that if you're pulling, pulling back into the index, the growth indexes, the FANG names, um, look, some of them. They're eating be- them up. Yeah, I mean, you know, and, well, and at the expense of the ones that outperformed last year. Yeah. And even last year, you had ARC with positive returns in and the energy ETFs with outflows. And yet they were the high, higher performer, which is not like retail investors that normally are piling into the winners, not right. the losers. But um, no, I think we're in a kind of cyclical change that you're going to have multi years ahead of you where uh, value is a better place to be than growth. Really? Oh, so yeah. not just a not just a temporary foxhole. No, and by the way, that's never been that way. It's never been two quarters or even two years. It's generally a decade at a time. And so you really saw a great environment for value in the 80s, growth in the 90s, value in the 2000s, growth last decade. I think this decade's different. You've often made the point for investors to eliminate index investing, but... There's even a different uh, reason for it at this particular point, right? There is. I think that index investing works just great if you want low cost and just buy the whole market when you believe the whole market's going up. So out of the financial crisis, the Fed put rates at zero and held them there for 10 years, flooded the world with liquidity, and PEs had been low, earnings were low. Well, earnings went up and PEs went way up. But the price earnings ratio, the valuation of the market, that was 75% of the return that investors got. Earnings were only a much smaller part. They grew, but you got that big, high P.E. ratio. I just don't see it for the years to come. I think indexing right now is a play on five companies. You know, the top five companies, it's 1% of the S&P, and it's over 20% of the S&P's value. And at one point, it was over 30%. It was. (laughs) And the way it's gone now, maybe there again. It may be. Uh, Speaking of earnings, uh, earnings season's just begun. Yeah. The reaction to earnings have been pretty good. They, they haven't really been gangbusters. Uh, you know, in fact, they've lived up to the hype that they're going to come in low. But you say don't watch the earnings guidance as much as we should be watching revenue guidance. Yeah, and the reason for that is you see a lot of companies that have declining earnings, but they're cutting costs. I mean, there's big job layoffs in technology, mm-hmm. and that's really a surprise. So to me, revenue is what you can't really fake what's going on with the company. Ultimately, stock prices are always about earnings. But I'm saying for guidance right now, I'm looking to revenue because that's macroeconomic. Earnings can stay okay even when revenue is dropping if you cut costs. Yeah. Revenues you can't fake. And there's a lot of engineering, too, yeah, between oh yeah. the top line and that bottom line. But not with dividends. You can't engineer <laughs> dividends. <laughs> Johnson & Johnson 3M. They report, uh, I think, before the open tomorrow. That's right. Um, you, you're long those. I'm trying to get a gauge for the viewers who want to be in something more conservative. Would this perhaps, would they perhaps be a buy before the close today? Well, look, you know, we're not traders, but it's a fair question. Uh, 3M, the issue is litigation. They have this subsidiary that had a uh, uh, ear deal that really they, the damages right now are unlimited in courts. And so the stock price is way down. We generally have found that those things don't end yeah. up. Ultimately, some judge down the, down the road says, OK, you can't get a gazillion dollars right. for this. Take 10 grand and be happy. And, and, and it could be a lot, but it right. isn't a zillion. Right. And, and um, I think Johnson Johnson is one that it doesn't matter. You can buy it anytime you want. If you want long-term dividend growth, very diversified, stable, high, great quality balance sheet, J&J, I'd buy anytime. Well, you've been hot, man. You, you've really crushed it. Congratulations. Thanks, Thanks a lot, David.